So we fire up the viewer questions? I, why not? We got this email from Mike who wanted to know, when I bought my 42 inch Panasonic Plasma, someone at Best Buy told me I should have it calibrated. For 300 bucks, it would extend the life of my TV and I will save on my power bill. My question is, do I need to get it calibrated? Will it extend the life of my TV and are there less expensive alternatives if I do? Does it come with ponies? Oh they, my God, of ponies! They do. In the box, <laughs> little furry ones and lots of them. I smell the hard sell of the unnecessary service here. Or at least like, what's the point of calibration? Why do you calibrate a monitor? Uh, a few reasons. One, to get a, get the most accurate picture possible out of the TV. Uh, there's so much variance in terms of the parts used, even within the same model from different right. specific sets, you'll see differences in the picture from one model to the other. That's just the given of the beast in terms of manufacturing. Plus the way they send it to the, the, the retail store with the blues and the whites pumped up through the ceiling to make it pop is totally. actually nothing like the video is actually supposed to look like. No, no. And there's usually one setting on the TV that is closest to the ideal, but mm -hmm. maybe you don't maybe you're not sure what that is, and maybe you want somebody to go through all the other settings in the TV to ensure that everything is configured properly. I mean, believe it or not, a lot of these TVs ship uh, more than a share ship with settings that aren't quite right or right. guess what, they left something turned off that should have been turned on that affects usually scene detail. I mean, it's one of the first things you do when you're testing an HD TV. I mean, you actually calibrate it the way it's supposed to be. That's part of it. I also take a look at exactly how it is right out of the box because 99% of the time, if a person buys a TV, odds are they're just simply gonna take it out of the box and plug it in and go, <laughs> go with it right from there. And that's where power savings can come into handy because simply by calibrating it, you tend to usually lower the overall brightness of the picture. Because you're turning the backlight down? If it's an LCD technology, certainly. Or even with the case of plasmas, you can get into a oh. picture mode where the whites just aren't being driven as hard because perhaps you're in a dark environment where you don't need that extra light. So I grok that if I turn the backlight down, I'm gonna use less power, right? Totally. The backlight probably consumes most of the power in the flat it's panel. It's directly related. What about the whole extending the life of the panel? That also is usually the case. The, huh. in, in particular for LCDs, the, 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 less, the less you run or the less amped up you run that backlighting system, the longer it's going to last. It's a fluorescent tube system in most cases, so right. if you can run it at a lower level, it will extend the life of it. But we're also talking like, they typically have a half-life of around 60,000 hours. <laughs> so, Or in the case of LCD panels, it's more about when the, the bulb is rated until it'll just burn out. But and that's the low end, so it could go up from there. So, you know, sure, you will save some power. divided by 24, divided by 7, divided by 52. But if you can get away with a lower backlight setting, particularly on LCDs, definitely always do that because it can cut the power consumption by two-thirds. I have to apologize to the Best Buy employee right now. How much should it cost, though? A pro calibration can start at $300. I've just, I, I have been in Best Buy. I have listened to that pitch. I really wonder what it is that they charge for $300 because in the case of Panasonic Plasmas, right. ideally, a good calibrator will go into the service menus of that TV, internal hidden menus, right. and deal with specific settings related to picture output. And I don't believe, they may have one or two guys in their region that are certified to do that kind of work, but I don't think your average Geek Squad calibrator is going to come out and get into the service menus and get things where they should be. Is there a certification people should look for? Like, you know, don't touch my television unless you have this? ISF, Imaging Science Foundation, is the, one of the, the originals in terms of original companies that started training people to do this kind of work and coming up with a set of standards like, hey, look, this is what they do in film production. We should try to mimic that kind of look for the picture setup on the television as well to make it look the same. And so they've been doing it for probably longer than ever, longer than anyone. However, you simply take a test to get that certification. It doesn't say exactly, that, 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 certifi that certification doesn't say, hey, I've been out in the field and I've looked right. at 30, 40 different of the same TVs and I, I know in and out what's going on. Just means you took the test and passed it. Totally. And <laughs> in the case of, uh, there's another company called THX. Mm -hmm. They also do a certification process that I've been through and I found that much more challenging because really? of the testing process. It was far more strenuous. And it they was- like you in a room with a television and a screwdriver. It was hard to pass. And even I had to take it a, a few times <laughs> before I finally passed that one. But that's a scary concept. It is. Is it worth it? I, I think in this person's case, $300 on a 42-inch panel, that's a, that's a significant percentage right. of the price of the TV anyway. I would say just, if you've changed anything, reset it, go back to your picture, your movie mode maybe, for nighttime viewing, and the standard or maybe a vivid mode for that bright, extra bright daytime viewing. One and last don't worry about it. question before we cut out. Is there some sort of consumer grade HD you know, TV tuning disc you can get? Definitely. I think everyone has, a, probably in their library of DVDs, a uh -huh. copy of a disc that contains the THX Optimizer. Any of the Pixar movies, they contain a really nice test pattern really? that's fairly simple to use. And you can go online and look up a PDF document that gives you more detailed instructions. But that's a fairly standard way to check things out. But I'll be honest with you, there's, 
there's some basic adjustments. It shouldn't require any new TV. Shouldn't require major adjustments with the settings you're provided with. I mean, there's a little notch here or there just to tweak things one way or the other. Maybe it's a little too green or a little too red, something like that. But other than that, uh, for Blu-ray media, I really like the HD Basics disc by Joe Kane Productions. Uh, it's a it's a wonderful disc you can get for under 15 bucks online, and it's a it's a terrific reference tool that also contains guided tutorials for setup and calibration. Speaking of Blu-ray discs, we're going to talk about Blu-ray players, which have dropped in price when we come back. Right now, though, we got to do a quick message from our sponsors at Bex.